how to knit shadow wrap short rows. Hi everyone, Norman here. Today's video is all about the ingenious shadow wrap technique. This way to knit short rows is almost invisible. It's super easy, quite fast, and it works very well, as you can see, very well for sock heels. I'm going to show you the standard version two improved techniques for the pearl side and I'm going to talk about the fine details for advanced knitters towards the end like how to adapt this technique when you want to knit garter stitch and so on. Let's dive right into it. The basic idea behind short rows is remarkably simple. Instead of finishing a row, you stop somewhere in the middle and turn around. Then you knit across the wrong side and again you don't finish the full row. Instead you stop and turn around and continue doing this until you are satisfied. And then you continue knitting across the full row again. And every time you turn around, you create a little double stitch. And later on, as you knit across the full row or round, you resolve these double stitches by knitting them together. And this will create excess fabric here in the middle and you can use this to shape heels and other such objects. Let's show you how to do this with shadow wrap short rows. The basic shadow wrap technique couldn't be simpler. So you start by knitting up to the position where you want to turn your work around. And then you need to lift the right leg of the stitch one row below. So this little leg here, you need to lift that back to your knitting needle. And then you need to knit that stitch. But now don't drop the stitch of the needle. Instead, slip that stitch back to the left needle, turn around, tighten up a little bit and continue knitting in the other direction. Let's rewind and do this in slow motion. And that's already the full secret. Of course, you can also knit a shadow wrap short rows here on the pearl side. Again, you knit up to the position where you want to turn around. And then slip this stitch here and then put this loop here back to the knitting needle. You have to do this with yarn in front. Um, so slip that back to the knitting needle and then purl that stitch. And then slip both stitches back to the left needle, tighten up, turn around and knit in the other direction. Again, let's rewind and do that in slow motion as well. Okay, that was the first pass. Let's do one more. So I'm going to continue knitting, but I will stop two stitches before the last double stitch. See this little double stitch and I'm going to stop two stitches before. 
short rows typically look the most invisible if you uh, have two or three stitches in between. If you cluster them all together, you end up with ridges. So just like before, lift this stitch here back to the left needle and knit it, slip it back right away and maybe tighten up a little bit. Turn around. Now let's do the same thing on the purl side one more time as well. And again, I'm going to stop two stitches here before uh, the double stitch. Then slip, slip the purl bump back to the knitting needle, purl it, and then slip both stitches back to the knitting needle and turn around. Now you can continue turning your project around in this manner, however many times you like. Once you and however many short rows you need for your shaping, once you are satisfied, it's time to resolve our shadow wrap short rows. And it couldn't be easier. You uh, knit up until you hit the first double stitch. It should be pretty easy to identify. And then you just knit these two stitches together. That's it. Then here is one regular knit stitch and here is another double stitch and we are going to knit that together as well. And that is the whole secret. So very, very simple. And then of course you can continue knitting but we still need to resolve uh, the double stitches here on the purl side and those are just as easy. And then when you come to the double stitch, so also very, very easy to identify, you purl them together and here is a single stitch in between, here is the next double stitch and you purl it together. Easy as that. And I'm going to knit across a couple of more rows so we can look at the results. So this here is the result. Isn't it beautiful? You can barely spot the double stitches. So we have one here, one here, and then there is another double stitch here and here is the fourth double stitch. You can barely uh, spot them and you might faintly be able to see a little wrap here below but that's about it. You might also see that these stitches are somewhat right leaning. So here these stitches are somewhat right leaning and of course, uh, I mean, we've knitted uh, them together. Knit two together is a right leaning decrease after all. So that's what you can expect. So these two sides, they are not symmetrical like knit two together and SSK, but they are identical or rather uniform. And advanced knitters might also notice that the floats here on the uh, wrong side have different lengths. So this one here is shorter than this one here. These are a little bit longer. So let's take a look. So here on the right side, we lift this stitch back to the knitting needle, knit it and slip it back. Then we turn around. So this is our little extra stitch. And then as we purl the adjacent stitch, we only have to bridge this gap here in between the stitches. However, here on the wrong side, you slip that stitch, lift that stitch back, purl it and slip um, both stitches back to the knitting needle. And then you turn around, turn around, and then you bridge this gap, but you also need to bridge this additional stitch. It is here sort of uh, in the way, and that's why these floats end up a little bit longer and maybe a little bit more pronounced. So how can we address this? 
So here's the easiest way um, to well, fix this if you can call uh, it fixing. So I'm gonna purl this double stitch here, purl two more stitches and then instead of all that slipping business you can also enter this stitch here from below and purl it takes a little bit of practice and slip it back to your knitting needle so that's a lot faster and then we turn around and see now uh, we don't need to bridge that extra stitch and then we can uh, continue in pattern and then once you come across this double stitch in the next row you also purl it together so this part stays the same the only difference is that you instead of lifting you go in between the gap sorry and slip that back to your knitting needle that's the difference. Now I sat down and knitted a swatch, a very, very long swatch with many short rows to find a symmetrical way to do a shadow wrap a short row here on the pearl side. And I found this for you. This took a lot of trial and error. And I want to stress that this is something I made up or invented and nothing you will find in the textbooks. So again, you pull up to the position where you want to place your shadow wrap. And then you lift that loop here back to the knitting needle. And now you purl that through the back loop. Slip that stitch back to the knitting needle and turn around. So again, we don't need to bridge that extra, um, that extra uh, float. And then you can uh, continue knitting. Now, when you come across the double stitch in the next row, you can't just uh, purl it together. Instead, you need to knit, knit an SSP, slip, slip, purl. So you need to slip two purl wise, and uh, knit wise, sorry. And then you need to purl them together through the back loop. And then you can continue purling. Let's show you this version one more time. So you lift this little purl bump here back to the knitting needle and you purl it through the back loop. Then you slip that back, turn around. Again, here's a reminder, it's better to really tighten up after that uh, initial double stitch so you don't end up elongating the legs or so, always a good idea. And then when you come across the double stitch, you slip two stitches knitwise, slip them back and purl them together through the back loop. Uh, SSP is the counterpart to SSK on the purl side. Uh, a very, very neat decrease. Uh, you definitely should remember because it actually can look better than SSK. So let's take a look at our swatch and see what we've created. It might be a little bit more difficult to spot the uh, double stitches or shadow wrap stitches, but if you zoom in a little bit, you can see them. So here, this is the standard version. This is the version where we went in through the whole hole from behind and here, um, this and this is the version uh, that I made up. So here, the standard version, you typically can see that it is leaning a little bit to the right. This version is a lot easier to knit, but you can see that the legs of this stitch are well almost twisted. They almost appear to cross. It's easier to knit for sure but um, or faster to knit, but these stitches cross. And here, this version here, things are fairly balanced here in this department. So because it's leaning towards the left, what we, uh, we added more fabric in this direction. So it's more or less straight, but you might be able to see a little 
second strand here of the wrap that goes all the way around uh, here on the left side peeking through on the wrong side of course this is what you can expect a very long float shorter floats and shorter floats here on this side decide for yourself which version you like best the this version here is uh, sorry this version here is probably the easiest to knit as you don't have to slip all that many stitches around technically speaking this is probably the ideal symmetrical solution while of course i mean the standard version does require a bit of annoying slipping as well but it will uh, look nice in most cases nobody will look at your knitting and say oh you use a right leaning decrease on the right side of your fabric how could you and speaking of technical differences, you might wonder, well, where's the difference compared to German short rows? Well, at first glance, they seem to be very different. Again, for a shadow wrap, you lift, you knit, slip back, and then you turn around. Now with German short rows, you knit one stitch, then you turn around, then you slip that stitch point to point and then you pull all the way down and continue uh, knitting in the other direction. So it appears to be decidedly different. About the only thing that stays the same is that you knit the double stitch you create in this manner. You also knit it together in the next row or round and that's about it if we take a look at our swatch here you might notice that both versions are quite invisible so here let's take this needle so here this is our shadow wrap stitch and here this is our german short row can you spot the difference here and here where would you say is it well the difference is probably a little bit more visible here on the wrong side. So this is German short rows and here this is the shadow wrap. And with the shadow wrap you create a full extra stitch here that exits through this pearl bump here. And then you have this is the little float and this is the lifted stitch with a German short row stitch you almost end up with a little knot like structure here on top and then you have this one slanting little stitch here that goes into the adjacent stitch. So when you stretch things out with a German short row stitch you can see here there is this little diagonal stitch with a shadow wrap stitch this little diagonal ends up being one row below as you work it through a stitch one row below here this wrap is a little bit more visible while with a german short row uh, stitch that typically is hidden here behind and not as much visible but that's about it so basically a German short row is doing this here. So you're basically adding the strand uh, between the two stitches to the stitch while a shadow wrap is basically doing this here. So not a very, very big difference and that's why they also look very, very similar. Another difference I need to highlight here is that it's rather easy to create twisted stitches, twisted short row stitches with German short rows. So normally you slip like this, but you can also slip knitwise, knitwise, and then pull down to create your double stitch. And then as you come across the double stitch, you knit it together through the back loop and this will create a twisted double stitch. You can do the same thing with uh, shadow wrap stitches. So you can also um, knit that through the back loop and then slip this stitch around, slip this back 
and then knit them together in the next row. This will also create a twisted stitch. Let me show you. As you come across this double stitch, you can also knit that together and this will create a twisted stitch. So it's the same stitch, but I don't know if for me the German sh twisted uh, sh German short row stitch is a little bit neater than the and tighter than the shadow wrap version. Uh, maybe I have a little bit more experience with German short rows. I don't know. Again, this is the twisted uh, shadow wrap stitch, and here. This is the twisted German short row stitch and I feel it's just neater than this version here. Now you might say, well Norman, that's a little bit too academic for me. I'm just a beginner. What do I care about twisted short row stitches? Well, here's the thing. A lot of tutorials show you how to knit short rows and they almost always do it with stock knit stitch. Why? Well, it kind of makes sense because um, sock heels are typically stock knit stitch. And if you want to shape the back of your sweater with short rows, well, that's typically also stock knit stitch. Now I hope my German short row tutorial showed you that even in these cases, specifically sock heels, the use of twisted stitches can be very beneficial and look neater. I'll link you my tutorial up in here, but I also did the same for this video. So I knitted a little or turned a little sock heel here using standard shadow wrap short rows and here up above sorry here I use the standard stitches here on this side but here on this side here on this side I used my left leaning version so I think this also looks very nice and is for me at least a little bit more condensed but there's more. What if you don't want to knit stock knit stitch, but garter stitch or seed stitch, moss stitch or whatever, then you might quickly notice that the standard technique isn't getting you very far. I mean, what do you lift up here? This, this, this looks totally different. And even if you lift this back to the knitting needle and knit it, will it be pretty? Well, let's take a look. So again, I toyed around quite a bit and I've knitted, I don't know how many swatches until I found a version that I really like for garter stitch. So here on the right side, I lift this purl bump here, this purl bump back to the knitting needle. And now I knit that little purl bump here through the front loop. So I'm not going here into the back. I'm getting here into the front and this can be a little bit fiddly. And then I slip that extra stitch back to the knitting needle, tighten up, oops, tighten up and turn around. And then I continue knitting. And on the other side, you can't do it like this. So the idea here is that you need to, you're creating a little float and you want to hide that on the wrong side. So here I lift this stitch here back to the knitting needle as well. But now I am going through uh, the back loop. Slip that stitch back and turn around. So let's do that one more time. So here on the other side, here on the other side, let's stop. Well, we are going to stop three stitches here before. I lift this back to the knitting needle and now I go through the front. Well, without splitting the yarn, of course. And then I turn around. Oops, tighten up here so my join looks all nice and neat. 
and then here on this side, where's the double stitch here? Here on this side, also lift it back, but here I go through the back loop. And then I turn around. Now, when it comes to resolving these stitches, you don't need to do anything special here. As you come across this double stitch, you simply knit it together. I keep on splitting the yarn here. I don't know why. And then here is another double stitch. And we are going to knit that together as well. And here on the wrong side, as you come across these double stitches, they are a little bit more difficult to see as they are not clustered as close as the other double stitches in stock and knit stitch, but you also knit them together. This is of course garter stitch and you knit across all rows and I'm going to knit across two more rows here to show you the result. So this is the result. Isn't this neat? So you end up with super nice transitions here on both sides and these ridges here are more or less uninterrupted. The wrong side isn't that neat. So here you end up with these slanting lines and here you end up with, well, I don't know, longer or offset knit stitches. That's something you cannot avoid uh, as soon as you start knitting short rows or anything else, color work or so. Garter stitch typically ends up being fully reversible, but here I think this is pretty neat. So how did I find this? Well, you can toy around with a swatch uh, yourself. So there are quite a couple of permutations uh, when it comes to shadow wrap. So you can lift this stitch back to the knitting needle and you can knit it. You can knit it through the back loop. You can purl it or of course you could purl it through the back loop. You can also slip that stitch and lift the left leg back, uh, the left leg back to the knitting needle and you can knit it. Oops, yarn should be in back. Uh, you can knit it through the back loop. You can knit through the front loop. You can purl through the front loop. You can purl through the back loop. And then of course, um, you can, what you can also do is you can slip point to point and you can slip twist it. And later on, when it comes to resolving these double stitches, you can knit them together. You can knit them together through the back loop, but of course you can also purl them, purl them, uh, purl them together or purl them together through the back loop or SSP or SSK or any other uh, variation. And that's basically what I did. I knitted a swatch and garter stitch, a very long swatch, and then I toyed around with all these permutations, very, very short, short rows, so to speak. And then I checked what I like most. I am specifically mentioning this because short rows can be a fantastic way to introduce colors and texture into shawls, but shawls typically aren't just stock and stitch. That would be kind of boring. And then I urge you to knit a little swatch with your knitting stitch pattern and toy around a little bit. Lift that leg, knit it through the front loop and through the back loop and so on and find a version that you feel looks good in this particular case and with your tension and your knitting style. Anyway, that's how to knit shadow wrap short rows. Comment below if you have any questions and of course like this video if you enjoyed watching and don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss any new videos. Happy knitting and enjoy the rest of your day.